beautifuls, this is Aroma here, and welcome back to Sounds of Her Love. So, Carrie's acting kind of, kind of standoffish here. We don't like it. We don't like it. Alright, Carrie, but we're gonna leave her alone, apparently. I turn around, leaving Carrie behind me as I join the students from her class heading towards the cafeteria. Whether Carrie wanted me to object or not, I'm unsure. However, she won't be able to get away from me this easily. Letting her friendship dissipate like this isn't something I want to allow. I find myself sitting in the cafeteria, clutching a sandwich in my hand. A little earlier, the guy sitting in front of me got into a fight with one of the younger students over who'd get the last beef sandwich. I'm not really sure why these things are so popular. You enjoying that sandwich? You better be. I was wounded pretty ba bad back there. He didn't even touch you. Can you just let me pretend for a minute? School's pretty boring, man. To be honest, he is right. Having to sit here without care is quite agonizing. A distressful, distressful experience putting my entire state of mind into a flurry. Even though yesterday I sat alone in class, being here with the sky isn't much better at all. Are you listening, mate? Sorry, can you repeat yourself? I was saying, what if they introduce lamb into the school sandwiches? There's plenty of sheep and whales, aren't there? I wouldn't know if I've never been there. I'm not even Welsh. Neither have I, man. I just thought, you know? <laughs> it seems this guy's pretty invested in sandwiches. The bell rings to signal the end of lunch, causing me to feel more depressed as I know how I know I now I think I now have to face afternoon lessons, not no. Whilst listening to the mundane talk of my classmate, I decide to try again with Carrie. The idea is to walk her home. Pretty bold in itself, but I know for a fact she's not going to be compliant. Dragging her out of her hand out by by hand is one option. Although the action seems really dodgy and disrespectful to her. In a way it might show her how much effort I'll be put put I'll put into being there to support her. What could go wrong? She could slap her hand. That could go wrong. The classroom is filled with the uniform aura of apathy as it slowly drags on towards the final few minutes. Thinking back on my idea from earlier, I need to find a way to be able to get out before Carrie. It can't be guaranteed that her class will let out late again, so I really don't want to miss her. Raising my hand, I eagerly wait for the students to notice. Asking to be excused for the restroom is undoubtedly the best way to be the first one out of the classroom. There's about five minutes until lesson ends, so there shouldn't be re really there shouldn't really be a problem. Well, you can do that in my school. It's like the like I think the last fifteen or thirty minutes of the school ending, they're like, nope, no more restroom passes. <laughs> yes, Michiko. Excuse me, Miss. May I please be excused for a restroom break? Go ahead, Michiko. It seems that the teacher herself is quite apathetic towards her own lesson, sending me off in a tired, indifferent manner. I leave the classroom behind me, and some classmates looking shocked after realizing my plan to get out of class before them. Turning down the corridor, I walk slowly towards Carrie's classroom. This time, she's not getting away so easily. You're gonna wait there for five minutes? Why don't I go to the bathroom, actually? Wait for, like, wait in there for four minutes, and then walk out. The bell rings to officially to officially end everyone's school day. I've been waiting here for a few minutes, so in order to use up some time, I bought myself a drink. As people begin to walk down the corridor, I toss my can in the bin and continue to wait for Carrie's class to come through the doors. Surprisingly, this time Carrie is one of the first people to get out of her class. Perhaps she wanted to prevent a repetition of the events of lunch, getting out early so she could avoid me. Unfortunately for her, though, as soon as the chance arises, I grab her by the hand and make my way down the corridor with her at quick pace, her trailing behind me with an extraordinary sense of embarrassment, one which breaks new boundaries. Uh, what are you doing? I'm walking you home. What? Sorry, I don't know what it's like. Confused, Carrie continues to stumble over her words as I take her with me down the corridor. Despite her being able to let go of my hand, she shows no restraint as she allows herself to be taken with me. As we m move, I notice a few stares and smiles from various people from our year group. Even sounds of lighthearted laughter can be heard. Different to how Carrie was treated before, I can only assume that they find the events funny in a friendly manner. Where are we going? I said I'm taking you home. Your house! I told you I'm walking you home, didn't I? Yeah, man, you forgot already? Saying that, both of us almost running as we pace towards the school's exit. Not a speed definable as walking, but I'm still taking her back to her school, or house. <laughs> Take her back to her school. Students move swiftly out of our way as we get outside and through the school gates onto the road. I didn't even finish reading that. With a pair of us receiving the same odd looks and giggles as we finally break from the school ground. 
I like a little by grip of Carrie's hand since the entire action still is embarrassing. More so the fact that running out of the school had caused us both to sweat lightly. I can trust Carrie not to run off now, so we both slow down into a brisk walk as I take her on the journey back to her house. So, did you manage to catch up with your work? What are you talking about? You're obviously lying. Uh, oh, that was... I... A flustered Carrie walks behind me as she tries her best to let out her words. The sight causes me to laugh, knowing that I've seen through her lie. Is this, it's this sort of experience that I had longed for. You're pretty cute. Oh wow, I'm so bold all of a sudden. Shook. Saying that Carrie ramps up her level of befuddlement, causing me to lose myself in her adorable trance. I only told her the truth. What? Y you really think so? I'm sure you know you're cute too and you just bluff it. <laughs> really? His face is ablaze with emotion as she looks towards me with a hard blush, fiddling with her hair as it entwines around her fingers. Thank you. She meekly clasps her right arm as we continue walking down the road in a state close to silence, neither of us deciding to continue conversation. The real fact is that Carrie still isn't feeling good inside. Trying to force her into a state of happiness would just make things worse. I'm fine with being able to come this far with her, walking down a street lit up by the afternoon sun. This is something I've always wanted to do with Carrie. Being there for her, being with her, it brings my feelings for her into question. You love her, bro. Our steps are in sync as the two of us walk side by side down a street which is now quite familiar to me. Accompanying Carrie on the way home may have seemed like a brash thing to do, the idea itself established rather hastily. However, being here with her after spending yesterday in a state of worry gives me a sense of relief. The issue that caused this are still present, however, but showing Carrie that she doesn't have to go through it alone is enough of a reason for my actions. We find ourselves idling in front of her house, neither of us really wanting to start the traditional words of farewell. Carrie takes the lead, despite being rather reserved throughout the day. Thank you. I'm sorry about earlier. I just needed some time alone to think. It's been hard recently. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. I had the drink. I'll hit... I hit my cup. Water bottle thingy on my head. I'm just hurting myself everywhere, man. It's alright, Carrie. Carrie is still bearing the weight of uncertainty as she faces the chance of having to leave everything and everyone she's known behind to move away. And from what her father had told me, the distance between her and what she cherishes would be quite extraordinary. Remember, Carrie, you have people who are there for you. Even if it's the two people she's likely to leave behind. I know. You've been a great friend to me. That's why it's hard. With Carrie saying that the door to her house opens wide despite neither of us reaching out for a handle. Standing before us is Carrie's father, sporting a smile which I... Oh, that's not Tyler, okay. Sporting a smile which, which I can only describe as uneasy. Both of us know the situation. Carrie is in... It is in and both of us are trying our hardest to deal with it. I thought I heard someone speaking outside. Come on in, Michiko. You're more than welcome to stay for dinner. <laughs> Mr. Irwood wastes no time trying to get me inside of his house. All I can assume is that he has something he wants to discuss with me. I can do more than guess that it, it is he... What he is... What it is he wants to talk about. The startled response coming straight from her. Carrie is still somehow shocked at her father's in invitation. Idols behind me as I step forward into her house. Are you coming inside, Carrie? Yes. I mean, it's her house. I would hope so. It's strange that a man has to ask his own daughter if she's going to enter their own house. But it's not something I wouldn't expect happening with Carrie. Her actions are quite adorable. Dispelling that train of thought, I divert my attention back to reality, knowing that there's still a large uncertainty that hangs over us. As Mr. Irwin and I walk further through the hall, Carrie stands behind and speaks out to us. I need to put some things away upstairs. I'll come back down in a minute. Okay, okay, game. Stop lagging on me. Rushing off quickly up the stairs, Carrie leaves her father and I alone in the hallway. Well, the two of us can go. Can still go through to the dining room. You want a beer? I know you're below the Japanese drinking age, but the laws are different in my house. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> okay, 
willing, willingly accepting his offer, the two of us walk into the dining room, both of us knowing what's on the other's mind. Sitting down, both of us are reluctant to start the conversation. Carrie could come down at any minute. It wouldn't be pretty for her to, to hear us talk about her behind her back. Still, a thought is something I have, I'll have to neglect. Avoiding this conversation is what I'd want to do. So, has she been any better? She's still pretty upset. His voice has a certain firmness that seems unfitting for the discussion, as if the fact that Carrie is in emotional distress doesn't concern him. I think she likes you, you know? The thought of having to leave you doesn't sit well with her. With her. Head burp. What? What? <laughs> Repeating my thoughts aloud, I stare blankly at Mr. Irwood, who sits in front of me with a smile. Did he just suggest Carrie likes me? In what way is he suggesting? I mean that she's upset and upset that she'd have to leave you. No, no, the part before that. That? Oh, I'm just suggesting that Carrie has a crush on you. You know there's a time in a girl's life where they find someone they like. That's the way it is for everyone. Was this guy really telling me that his daughter fancies me? Hearing, <laughs> I love the word fancy. Hearing it is quite a shock, especially from him, her own father. Thoughts rush through my head as I think over my relationship with Carrie. Carrie's action towards me have never been quite confident. She's always seemed embarrassed or shy, but that's just how I thought she normally was. To think that she likes me is a strange thought, yet inside I can't deny the feeling of happiness, the feeling of wanting to be with her. You're a good kid. I've always thought that good kids deserve good news. Diverting all, diverting my attention back to Mr. Irwin, he continues talking with a smile on his face. I've had some talks with my solicitor. Legal stuff, right? He told me that I'm likely to win custody of Carrie. My wife isn't known to have the best mental health record, so don't feel too down, kid. Carrie's going to stay. A wave of relief washes over me. Knowing that Carrie doesn't have to face her burdens, it, it's a pleasing thought. Even more so that I know how Carrie feels about- well, You don't know that! Dude, the dad's just guessing! I can't even describe what either of us would feel if we were separated. Have you told her yet? Not yet. I wanted to wait until the time was right. What does he mean? I think that telling her would be the first thing he does. he'd do. For days, Carrie has been watched with agony, finding herself delusioned in reality. She faces having her life torn apart by an uncontrollable force. It's odd. Can I ask you a favor? What? Take my daughter out on a date. What? What? It seems as if what is the only thing I can get out around this guy to be full of surprises. What's even more surprising that Carrie's still taking her time with putting her stuff away. Me and her father have been talking about her for quite a while. Her father has just asked me to go on a date with her, yet she's conveniently upstairs completely unaware of what's going on. Why are you so adamant about me and Carrie? I reveal my thoughts to him, and no way, I, no way do I not want to go out with Carrie. It's strange that her father is pushing us together. Percy tells me she likes me, and now he's trying to tell, to, uh, trying to get me to take her out. Aren't fathers supposed to be reluctant to let a guy take their, uh, let a guy date their daughter, especially when they've only known each other for less than two weeks? It's just Carrie's never had any friends. To know that she's managed to make one, one which she even likes, I don't want her to miss the opportunity. And hey, you're not a bad kid. I have no objections to you dating her. I hear in these words their strange thoughts, which never, never, were never foreign, but a reality, which certainly is new to me. I must, I, I myself can't deny the feeling I've held for Carrie, even if they were abstract for the most of the time. Now presented with this, I'm assured of what those feelings were. Love. The sound of footsteps resonate from the hallway, giving me and Mr. Irwood a clean sign of change in the di direction of our conversation. So, Michiko, how's school? Oh, it's been great. I'm back. Oh, Carrie, sit down. I'll get dinner prepared for us. Walking out of the room, Mr. Irwood leaves me with Carrie, the girl which drew out my inner feelings. Seeing her now sitting before me with a slight frown as she looks downwards at the table, filling with her braids. It makes my heart race. Mr. Irwood soon comes back into the room carrying plates topped with dinner. Carrie and I still sit in silence, each of us taking occasional glances towards the other without being directly bothered bothered by it. Yeah. As Carrie's father places a plate in front of me, the smell itself is enough to signal the quality of it. Last time his dinner was actually quite enjoyable, like Carrie said. It smells nice. I knew you'd like his cooking. Breaking the wall between us, Carrie finally speaks up. Her father, her, her face, not father, her face, though, is still masked by sadness, possibly due to the events of what had happened the first time I tried her father's cooking. 
Unbeknownst to her though, it seems things aren't going to work out in the end. Mr. Irwood sits at his own seat and the three of us tuck in our meals in between conversations at least. So, how did he do to me anyway? I don't think he ever told me, Carrie. Uh. Carrie's face is lit by embarrassment, both of us recalling the events of that day. It's funny now to think that a chance event could bring us close to each other. I glance at Carrie, signing to her that she can explain everything to her father. It's a cruel thing to do considering her timid timidity. Timidity? Whatever. The, <laughs> the watching her explain it is going to be cute. Well, I dropped my bag on the way to school. My library card was left behind, and he gave it back to me. Really? That's an odd way to meet someone. Mr. Irwin laughs at Carrie as Carrie's face increasingly reddens. There are, of course, more details to it than that. If I hadn't decided to walk up to her in the cafeteria, then none of this would have happened. Carrie's face still seems sorrowful, making her remember how we met when she still thinks we might be leaving each other. Why hasn't he told her yet? To make her appreciate it more, maybe? The ongoing stream of time flows forward, the three of us having finished our meals and the clock itself reflecting how long I've actually stayed here. I didn't even tell my family where I'd be, so they're probably going to be either angry or inquisitive. I doubt any of them would actually be worried about where I am. I think it's getting a bit late. Yeah, I wouldn't want to keep you here for too long. It's been good to speak to you, Michiko. I think Carrie should walk you to the door. I'll say my goodbyes here. Okay, thanks for the meal, Mr. Irwood. My pleasure. Carrie as startled as ever trails after me as I walk, walk out into the hallway of the Irwood residence towards their front door. Our eyes lock. Carrie still flared up with embarrassment, and I still filled with a newfound sense, sense of direction. Carrie, would you like to go somewhere with me tomorrow? After school, that is. You want to go somewhere? Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Okay, sure. Carrie seems, still seems rather embarrassed. It was only days a, uh, days ago that she herself invited me to town. Despite not calling it a date, I find myself attaching a co connotation to this upcoming trip with her. I don't plan on missing any opportunities with it. Anyway, I think I should get going. I'll see you at school tomorrow, Carrie. I try to make a swift exit, despite wanting to spend as much time with her as I can. Sitting here with my heart pounding on my chest is sending my mind into a frenzy. See you tomorrow. Stepping outside, I turn back to Carrie and give her a smile, one which thankfully she returns, knowing that there's a future for us somewhere. It makes me feel content. Carrie slowly shuts the door behind me as if, as if trying to save her our time together. Things for us have been quick, sure, but tomorrow I, I plan on changing the course of things for both of us. Finally be here for Carrie, even if she no longer con con <laughs> even if she is no longer constrained by the burden of depression. I'm looking forward to it, but it's going to be hard to wait. Sounds of bird chirping wake me up earlier than I expect to. My new alarm clock is quite good in this se in that sense, but I find that I want to wake up as early as possible. It gives me enough time to get myself ready for another day, with today in particular being a being of enough importance for me to want to experience it. Today, a day which would have otherwise been a plain and generic day, it's a day I take Carrie out on a date that she does not know anything about, <laughs> even though I never called it that. That's what it seems like. Her father's even told me to take her on one, out on one. So in a way, I feel it is. More importantly, this is the day I'll tell Carrie my feelings, the ones which I've had for a while, all without realizing them. Now then, whenever I think about her, her, my heart races, energized by my passion, my desire to be with her. It's a strange feeling, one which I've never had before, but I embrace it. That's you. After taking the time to freshen myself up, which involves the usual morning routine of the shower and cleaning and teeth cleaning, I make my way downstairs to have breakfast. So far, these are things I would normally do. They're unlikely to change as well, however. Oh, as well. However, the only notable difference today is the keen smile I keep on my face as I continue to feel a rush of emotion. In the dining room, as you'd expect, my family are sat around the table, while my mother and father at least. Unsurprisingly, my sister is still either in bed or slowly waking up. Joining my parents at the table, I reflect on the situations Carrie had found herself in. She may not be able to experience having both parents with her, but now she can finally stop worrying about leaving one for the other, especially when she doesn't even like her mother. I still don't know whether her father has told her yet, though I should be able to tell when I see her, a sight I look forward to. 
What are you so happy about, son? Isn't he allowed to be happy? Why do you have to question him? I'm not questioning him, woman! I'm just <laughs> asking him why he's so cheerful. But that's, that is questioning me. Still, I feel as if I should answer him. I don't mind telling him why I'm happy, just as long as I don't have to be specific about it. I'm going out later. Hmm. Instead of intensely badgering me for more information, my father refrains and provides me with a quick stare before giving me a small smile. Alright, son. Strange. It is because I told him I was going to Carrie's house the other day. I don't know. That would give him a good reason not to ask me whether I was going with the girl, if he already assumes that I will be. Neither of us continue speaking, giving the opportunity for my sister to rather abruptly sit down beside me. As expected, it looks like if she's had a bad day already. But this is where we are going to stop. I feel like the next episode is probably the last episode of us confessing our feelings and see how she feels about us. If she's going to friendzone us or we're going to be together. Unless that's not how the story is going to end. I have no idea. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.